Wassail. So we're indoors, partly because the weather's been a little bit shitty. Actually, it's beautiful. And the sun is coming out really hot today. But yesterday, uh, the energies just weren't right for this reading, stretching back. I needed to spend time last night looking at the dark sky with all the stars glittering because where the full moon's approaching now, the sky is darker and it just, it lights up so beautifully. So, it's pick a lichen. I want to say pick a lichen. <laughs> You can say it either way, but it's more commonly like. And so these are the four images that are on my website. <clears throat> I've got them here with me to focus on them. And I thought this week uh, that I would show you, well, we're going to do a different kind of reading. I'm kind of avoiding Oracle decks for this because I need to be able to go to a very esoteric place and I need just tarot to do this. It's too easy to rely on oracles to give you keywords and uh, we've got to go quite a long way back for this one. So, uh, and I have tried a couple of times and I've kind of been told that the message will come through if I just allow the flow. So, I've taken out my very very old since we're dealing with old energies my lovely it's got a beautiful little moon crescent moon on the top and i've had this for about 23 24 years and i'm going to douse over four different tarot decks to pick which deck for which reading <clears throat> So, can we please look at picture one, the green. You see, that's just feeling very strange because it's the green deck. But that one's swinging. And that one's swinging. But on this one, you can see that the... I need to hold it in the other hand, feel more stable in the other. See, look there, the energy doesn't want to go towards that deck. So is it this deck? So now it's turning clockwise. So we will take that deck for reading number one. Now we can push them in a little bit. So. Image number two, definitely doesn't like that one, or that one. You see now it's changing direction, and it's beginning to turn. So, reading number two, that deck. You see, I kind of immediately want to say that the first deck's more magical, the second deck's more about the ego. So, three, image three. And now just to test, image four. Doesn't like that one, look, it's trying to pull back to this one. So, three and four. Fabulous. Now, we also have underneath this lovely little box that says La Mer, that usually holds tissues. Maybe that's a clue that we might have a little bit of weeping. <laughs> I got out my very first tarot deck, which I don't use very often because I want to give underlying energies to the readings. But I'm gonna do that once. I was gonna do it the other way around, but it just, I feel like we've got to go backwards. Everything's got to be reversed. So let's do it. Let's ring the bells before we shuffle.
You see, I got a sense on that the third bell was the strongest. The first two were incredibly round, incredibly stable, and I felt um, portal openings, um, which is a good thing. Um, and then the third bell was like spotting the damage or spotting the truth or spotting the moment or finding the space. But it's also that moment of stepping into a memory and it's slightly hurting. Um, not in a really bad way, but just an awareness that we need to have. And then the last bell softened back out because it was that sense of integration. So let's begin with image number one. I'm liking this. Thank you, Sheila. <laughs> was a little joke she sent me and it did make me laugh. I mean, I'm not usually one that doesn't spot a pun, but my only head was like, pick a licking, pick a licking, pick a licking. So thank you, Sheila, for making me laugh. So, image number one, please. What is the oldest anchor in our DNA, what is the oldest anchor in our DNA? What is the oldest anchor in our DNA? Uh, just need to remember that that card was hidden. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that one facing up to remind me that that was the only one that wasn't didn't fall. <clears throat> So that was a good tarot, well that is a good tarot, this, for picture number two is the Tarot Grand Luke's, what is the oldest energy anchored to the DNA here for people that pick two, what is the oldest energy anchored to the DNA of people that pick number two, what is the oldest energy anchored to those that picked number two. One more shuffle. Right, so we've got a similar thing here. We've got one card that didn't quite fall. And now picture number three. This is the green and white image. Please show us what is the oldest thing anchored to the DNA? What is the oldest emotion anchored to the DNA? What is the oldest emotion anchored to the DNA? What is the oldest emotion anchored to the DNA? I, um, one, mm -hmm. these, these cards have a habit of falling in blocks, but do you know what? I'm just going to accept that that's their block. Don't want to put away anything. And then finally, that was the Lost Tower of Nostradamus, by the way. The sun's now coming out. I knew it was going to. It's going to be a hot day. I can enjoy it while this is uploading. So now we have Alistair Crowley for number four. With the ivy across it. What is the oldest energy attached to those people that picked number four? There's a few cards, but I feel like I just want perhaps one more, but perhaps not. No, interesting. As soon as I started shuffling, it said stop. So now we need the old deck. And we need to add a card please to number one, three, for image number two. For image number two, please. Again, three. These are going to be long, but still. And three again for that one. I'm going to put 
put that one in, sorry, I want fallers for this bit. For number four, much more clarity on four, just a single one. And then I've got a little tiny Lenormand deck, since we're in France, Madame Lenormand, who didn't actually ever read these cards. She read Coffee Grounds and she died in the 1790s. And when she died, she left a fortune of half a million francs, which her nephew took and then burnt all her papers because she was an esoteric witch and he was scared. Happy to take her money though. So can we please have a card for pile one? A card for pile one. A card for pile two. A card for pile three. These are behaving. A card for pile four. I knew that one wasn't because it only had one of the other. It's got two of those. Right, so now we're off. So, did you pick pile number one? I'm doing this to help me find the timestamps. <laughs> okay, so pile number one. Let's lay us out. <clears throat> interesting, very interesting. Okay, so yours is the emotion of joy, but it's distorted, remember, because we're dealing with something that's attached to you and attached to you that the two key elements, as I said, was this card of the six of water and the three of cups. <clears throat> is coming out. So the three of cups, celebration, happiness, reunion, being together, being in groups, being combined, your love reaching out. I mean, you've actually got, in the Morgan Greer, you've got three cups. You've got three, five, and ten. Now, what this is telling me as an overall energy is that every time you move into a frequency of happiness, you're inviting this energy of loss. And yet, that's the true frequency. You're meant to be in blissful emotions. And this six of water I mean, today this is being seen as there are six droplets of water and it's divid divided. There's a division to it. On one side of the riverbank, there are four pearls, which she leans towards. That's the joy, the love. And yet she's allowed two other um, drops of water to flow the other way. And yet they're taking with them the bloom, the sense of wonder. So even though she's still kept four, that she's leaning into and holding her belly and how her sacral, the seat of her emotion aches, she's the, the two that are leaving, she's allowing those to take away more than belong to them. It's like when we release the frequency of someone's, I want to say attention, but just someone's presence um we're empowering them with much more energy than they deserve and the lenormand card is card 22 and 22 has that sense of unions and there, there's two cups in this five of cups the ones that have fallen over or been kicked over. I mean, the, the point of this reading is, is it's going back to the very oldest thing anchored in the frequency of your DNA. And so therefore, you kick the cups over because you keep creating 
the trauma. You keep manifesting that distorted fear. And it's not your fault. It's part of an old, ancient, ancient echo within your DNA. And this card is about finding balance. There's a... It's the crossroads, sorry. Now you see there's a kind of water unicorn dragon. Um, which is a kind of... I'm getting from that energy today a sense of joy, wonder, majesty and magic. And yet confused you're confused by the joy when it arrives for you like you feel you don't deserve happiness and every time this wonderful magical cosmic moment happens you go following a bluebird which in terms of mythology in, in from where i am come from a bluebird doesn't exist so it's like a dream and you follow this dream into not a realm of danger, but just to a crossroads. And then you go, I can't be, I can't be this happy, so maybe I should walk on the other path. That's what seems to be the energy. Now, we have the messenger of Earth. She's coming across today as a molecular sprite. She is, she's got Triskelin images hanging from her ears uh three coils celtic ancient knots going very backwards far in time ringing in your ears i want to say uh i can hear a harp being played and i i only can say that the harp feels like heart strings thank you so it's like you just keep being caught in the heartstrings. Look, it's very interesting. You've got a three, six, and nine. It starts with this three and the six. You know, happy reunions from the past, from, and I mean past lives, echoing beautiful memories of things that have happened to ancestors, and it being this force of creative love, as well as being a union with another, and then you have the hermit. You shut yourself behind a door and somehow you put this sacral barrier up. <clears throat> and then we have, I guess it's like a solution. You have... The energy of two queens seated around you. You have the four of air. Now the four of swords is a healing. And look at the beautiful light around this card. You sit there, you've got this new energy blowing. But you've still got three peacock feathers representing the distorted version of this. This is joy and bliss. She has three peacock feathers. The fourth one is in her hand. And that's the one that she needs to add to finish the healing. So understanding that the pain is something that you keep going through because it's a very old distorted frequency that keeps resonating in your DNA and entangling your consciousness. And then we have the Queen of Earth and the Queen of Fire, which is, one's talking about your molecules. She's talking about healing your molecules of this distortion. And she's talking about healing your consciousness. It's like they're coming in to separate the space between these two things so that you can find your healing in between because the energy of these cards overall is joyful union remember the energy of the beginning is that's what you're meant to experience absolute joy it's only distorted because you keep creating 
a negative thought pattern that leads you to these crossroads. But you're being healed. You've got two fantastic ancient elementals coming in to resolve this with you. So yours is to accept that you can be loved and that you deserve love and that love is the very oldest truth in your core, okay? So that's pile number one, picture one. Let's move on to picture two. I need to move that. I feel like my candle's not glittering enough in my ball. I like it to just dance these ancient energies. It's the fire. So what do we have with the orange two? Wow, 12, 13, 14. Oh, that's really mad. That's beautiful. So, you've got the hanged man, death and temperance. I mean, that is so powerful to get those cards to come out in that order. That's amazing. So, three major arcana cards, three very big energies. And because they've come out together, they really are talking about the story um, that they have. Um, the hanged man is an energy of understanding something and then pausing to, to allow your consciousness and your molecules to think how they're going to turn everything upside down and transform... And that transformation is quite emotional um, with the death card, but it's about a return to innocence. Um, and it's, oh, no, it's not innocence. It always has been. This, this rose appears, this white rose appears on the fall card. And it only appears on the death card because the fall is the beginning of the journey. And the death card is when you choose to transform yourself. But this rose today is talking about um, the energy of joy, of pleasure, of laughter. It's talking to me of the frequency of your luminous warrior. I feel like I've got beard hair in my mouth. Well, maybe. Um, and then temperance, to temper something, is to pour water into wine to make it less alcoholic. So it's almost like your oldest frequency seems to be the, the, the distortion of happiness, which is a little bit like the past, but it's not quite as simple as that. It's not just a distortion of happiness. Yours is uh, allowing emotions... Ah, oh, I see. Emotions feel so incredibly powerful that you're frightened of being drunk on emotions and so rather than transforming and going through that process of transformation you would rather just hang around avoiding them and your Lenormand card is is happiness it's to radiate with joy happiness it's a wish fulfillment card so what do we have and have I pulled them? So, yeah, yours is based in fear. Fear of emotions. A fear of, of being involved with them. Um, a fear of changing them. These are like the nightmares that reoccur. Um, and th th there's something very... Mm, mm, I want to say pixies. I always see pixies in this card. Um, the candles are floating around like little tiny uh, lit... 
um, pixies dressed in white waxen dresses all floating around to protect you. You are protected from your fears. Um, but the, the thing about fears are they're, they're almost why we come down here. Because when we're a multidimensional being just existing in uh, our soul pot, everything is timeless, it's non-linear. And so there are no fears. And part of <clears throat> incarnating is to go through that battle. It's a little bit like a roller coaster ride. You know, we are in a great big fairground, only the time scale of it is not the same as the quick queue. Well, actually, in a way, it is. You queue for an hour to get on a ride, and then the ride's very fast and it shakes all your molecules up and gets you excited, and then you have to go and queue in another thing. And that is a little bit like life, but what I mean is. We select, choose to come down here as a soul because we want to remember the excitements that come when there's linear time and the fears. The fears have to be there because actually otherwise you lose sense of yourself. So embrace your fears. They're the thing you're hanging around observing really ultimately that is what you're observing but you get to choose transformation obviously <clears throat> so i'm be these I'm be i've got here the four of coins the two of coins and the eight of cups You see, this card is talking to me of <clears throat> that frequency, of that frequency of being in the soul pot and just being quite content with everything you have around you. You can travel anywhere in your soul and this is your higher self, your interdimensional self. It has everything it could ever need. What is the point of getting on the ship behind and going on a journey? The point is to change the frequency, to go on a tightrope walk, to, to be full of fear, to be full of joy, all of those moments. That's what drives you. That's the oldest energy anchored inside you is engagement engagement in the roller coaster ride of emotions and in order to do that you had to leave <laughs> this is so beautiful you had to walk away from your soul pot this is the home of your soul pot and you had everything around you all these cups they were all beautiful but do you know what you just you kicked a couple over to pour just those ones down into your soul contract and to incarnate them in your energy frequency. So the oldest distortion within you is fears and you're, you, you thought this time that you got the right combination of emotions and poured them down with your consciousness to weave down into those fears and to pull them back out. Now. This last section is a little more difficult. Spirit is with you, you are spirit. This is again, these, these are kind of like transformations. Your thoughts uh, bother you. This should be the Zen of thoughts. And it's, it's driven by spirit, but there's such determination on his face there's such um uh like a defensive wall around thinking it's like i remain in this energy i remain you know it's almost okay it's almost like there's a, a um, an energy that comes through sometimes which is to do with 
we all believe the spiritual path is something serious. That's partly because major religions teach us that spirituality is something um, very serious and not something to dabble lightly with. But spirituality is joy. It should be fun. It should be full of laughter. This man, he ain't laughing about anything. He's wearing spirit like a warrior with no humour. There's none of the idea of the luminous warrior. And then along comes the Queen of Wands. And <laughs> she, <laughs> she's looking at you like, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 I can see you're serious, but mm-hmm. Find some joy. Find some laughter. Stop moving forward with this kind of energy of spirit pushing at you and come into... Sorry, he was the Knight of Swords. That's what's so confusing me. It's an upgrade. It's because he's got KN. He's the Knight of Swords. This is the King of Swords. When you stop fighting at yourself and others and just... Heat up with a little bit of passion and, and fun and magic. Allow the magic. She's got, she's got herself organised. You then come into the true energy, which is the king of swords, who's no longer holding his sword. Spirit's kind of sitting on it. Everything's in balance. But he is the greatest aspect of your higher self manifested here in the 3D world. He's actually... He's got a cheeky little glint in his eye. It's got to be said. He really has. So, yeah, his third eye is open. He sees. He's now prepared. He's also got his wings. He's wearing his wings. That's the difference. The knight... Angry Knight has got spirit flying in front of him, using spirit as almost like a shield um, to bash at people and others to keep himself protected because really he's too scared to go into this transformation mode. And she is the transformation mode. This queen, she is the transformation. And then now he's got his energy wings. He's completely, all of his thoughts are organized now behind him. They're not driving forwards. They're behind him so that he can appreciate the energy of others. So that's pile two. Fears are important to witness on a roller coaster ride to transformation. And look, you end with the sun. You end with the sun. Joy, happiness, wish fulfillment. So this is energy number three, which I forgot to do for number two. I will just struggle to find that area. So, three. What do we have for energy number three? Oh, my God, this is the giant pile. <laughs> so. <clears throat> Let's put these down. So, um, what is the oldest frequency in you is organised religion somehow. Um, the, it begins with this frequency of excommunication, being shut out from the church, being shut out from spirit. So a frequency of being alone. I guess this is the oldest, oldest energy. Being shut out from heaven. Wow. This is like Garden of Eden. Fabulous. So. Um, and you have the Queen of Cups. 
and a healing. So, the Queen of Cups has an empty cup. There's no liquid in her cup because she is emotions. You are emotions. Oh, yes now, see? So, the oldest distorted frequency within you is the division between your molecules and your consciousness and you're trying to heal your molecules through the combining of your consciousness because the queen of cups she represents emotions to their very fullest the most uh to the point of smothering so i always talk about the energy of the Empress, she loves life so much. This energy, your multi-dimensional higher self loves because it's made only from love, just loves. And when you come down here, you feel so disconnected from that frequency that you feel shut out of heaven, like there's no connection, but you don't you blame spirit rather than seeing it as a choice. And the Four of Swords is about healing that broken heart, healing that connection emotionally to the cosmos and to the molecules. That's the point. You have to heal the molecules to heal the consciousness. And your Lenormand frequency is the harvest. It's deciding what parts of you you, you it's kind of like clearing the field chopping down all the hay the corn has grown it's now time to reap the rewards of your life but you have to you, you planted seeds in a field they grew into a wonderful harvest and now you have to cut that harvest down put it on a wagon take it to the market and exchange it for something you would like but there's some part of you that won't, doesn't want to cut the field because you've watched it grow over time. But that's the energy. You have to cut away the things that have helped you to grow to help you to join your molecules. So hopefully these mm -hmm, nine cards, divine nine. See, there's a nice little moment. This has to do with crown chakra. <clears throat> the first two cards are the master coming down to feed the flocks almost, coming down to the earth. The earth is behind him and placing too much importance on your spiritual journey. So you see he's the master is handing his hat his consciousness down to the people, the world is behind him. And then inside the world, when the hat appears in the world, because you don't have all of your memory of this masterness, your, in the, in, your interdimensional being, your fullness, the world seems suddenly terribly, terribly complicated. And... I'm particularly drawn to the fact that in this card, it's like you are being stripped and boiled or shedding a skin or it's, the energy is, the knowledge that you once had is now hidden from you. So you become a postulant um, and you feel alone, you feel, this frequency here of being shut out and yet you ask spirit all the time for solutions you ask for solutions you don't seek them in yourself all of the answers are still within you you are still this energy frequency if you allow that to move forwards in you the lobster card is talking about how um Slow and steady wins the race. Lobsters grow 
some lobsters are, you know, 25, 30 years old before some bugger pulls them out and then puts them in a pan, boils them and eats them. And that's this energy of being, uh, being around and then just feeling the whole time like, uh, like you're waiting to be plucked by spirit and yet actually what would happen is is you just get plucked and dropped into hot water every time you seem to so it gives you a sense of distortion to your connection with spirit you have moments of anger red fiery burning anger now i get it so then you have the wheel of fortune we have cock a doodle doo we have divine timing we have people lifting, people pulling, we have kundalinis. This is like, this is an energy of um, emotional and thoughtful confusion. It's like you can't, you literally, this is the distortion inside you. This is that frequency that you can't seem to move past. And then you have... So it's very hard to read the thing. We've got, I'm looking at the, oh, now then, he's holding Kundalini up down here in the bottom of the card. And spiritually, the cardinals in this card, those of the church that you've fallen from grace with, and that doesn't have to be, you know, ordinary religions. It can be your own spirituality, those moments when we doubt. You feel like there are wise people all around you who tell you things, and yet you still feel like the crowned lamb, the lamb, the Agnus Dei, the lamb of God, still innocent, still waiting for some kind of major epiphany. And... <clears throat> These two cards are really fascinating. It's, ah, oh, this is like the two versions in your head. This is what you believe an epiphany is. And yet this is the energy that you seem to come away with every time. So in the one, there is a, a the, your, your master figure is seated it's had its epiphany you've become an all-seeing eye you are almost saintly you're touching um a, a, f a woman on the on the left and you have made her a saint by your very touch and you hold out a cup of emotions to the poor in your other hand in the now and uh, griffins rise up to bite your wrist as if to say, don't do this, you know, the, the, you know, demons, gargoyles, that kind of energy. And yet you're powerful and you're strong and you have the esoteric knowledge that you once sought. But actually, the reality is just a porthole behind you where you feel like nothing properly floats in. And yet you keep looking and you've got just a dog that you're feeding a few crumbs to. And and, a, and you you hold your corn, your corn in your hand because you just you never let go of the corn. You think you've taken it to the market. You think you've done your work and had your epiphany point, but you haven't. And yet the energy that comes after the after the harvest, you cut back and you go to the market is this Queen of Cups, ending with the completed world all your emotions coming into focus, but they only come into focus when you let go of the pushing that you have to be, I want to say, like the manifester of saintliness. You have to find your own pathway through this and understand that your connection to spirit is is complete in its own way but you keep pushing for it to be at a higher level than you are yet ready to fully understand 
And that's not a problem. That's just the oldest energy in you that makes you have a sense of fury at times with spirit. And yet, if you can just relax into it, everything emotionally is divinely love that is in all parts of you. It really is there. It's an old energy that makes you think that you're incomplete all the time and shut out from spirit when you're not. So don't listen to others, find your own pathway. <laughs> so number four, what do we have here? This is the shortest one. <clears throat> oh, it's the sword of truth. Clarity and union. Ooh, actually, I do recall that that card came second. I saw it. So your energy is clarity of thought. It's like the oldest frequency inside you is truth. Searing, blinding truth. And that's the key to it. The blinding part is that you don't see the truth because there's an interference on it. And the interference comes in the form of the Eight of Swords. So... But the Eight of Swords doesn't come first. The first two cards that came are the Nine and Ten of Pentacles. And they're gain and wealth, but... It's... Gain is always, for me, about a combination of moving pieces around, um, like in a Rubik's Cube, but to create unification of the heart and soul. But this is talking today about um, you see truths in things, and yet you don't know how to apply these truths to bring a sense of order to the Tree of Life. This image is the Kabbalah Tree of Life, and this is the card of worldly presence. So it's like you have all the pieces in you to create the, 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 the fairy tale dream that you wish to live. This, this is a card of uh, singular presence and power because you have the clarity. And this is a card of earthing. This is a card of Virgo. This is a card of the moment right now. And it's about communication. It's speaking. Now it makes sense. You see the truths, but you don't voice the truths. And that's really interesting. Um, just looking at the Lenormand, you see the truth that you don't. So this interference is your. Oh, okay. You are. Um, you're gifted in your oldest frequency with the ability of being super empathic and you see the truth as something that hurts people because while you see, and that is your oldest frequency, you know that others would be wounded, that, that truth would literally cut through their soul. And so you've learned to avoid living in your absolute truth by creating 
an interference around you. And, and they're like the little white lies, you know? If somebody doesn't like something about themselves and you fear saying it, they, all, they often need to hear it. It's sacred clown, Hayoka empath frequency. But the energy that I'm getting from these cards is it's, it's, <clears throat> it's an energy that is stopping you from engaging in full relationships with people. You fear your Hayoka empath. So a Hayoka empath is a sacred clown, as I said. It's somebody who tunes into others and just wields that sort of truth and pokes them. Now, for you, it would mean running inside your home. That's why we've got this Lenormand card of the house. This is you in a frame of protection, running inside and shutting the door and not coming out. And there's a peacock. Peacock is communication. You put out um, loud but false communications of yourself. Um, so you run inside because you fear and worry that you've hurt someone and that they're upset and that this is all going to be terrible. When in actual fact... It's exactly what they needed to hear. Your Heoka empath abilities are about delivering wake up calls, I guess, wake up calls to other people so that they begin to see their own distortions of interference that they're wearing. So then we have the Ace of Wands. And the Ace of Wands is the Divine Spark. And that's part of what happens for you. You have this old ability to see through everything, to see the truth behind things, to see inside the soul of others. And yet, as it lights up, it's like... It's like the light is wrong. It's like, you know, when uh, sometimes you go into a room and you turn the light on because it's not fully dark and somehow the light makes the room almost darker or dingier. It changes the frequency, but it doesn't add to the pleasure of the room or the brightness of the room. And yet the truth of you is divine spark is the beauty because there's something about this card i'm being really drawn to the green and the red it's like the green is the healing but the red's dominating i think it's that the truths that you offer as a hayoka empath while they create an emotion within you when you said them so say for instance you you, you tell somebody something and you immediately go, ah, why did I just say that? Your immediate thing is shut yourself in the house, close off, can't talk about this, stick the peacock outside. Whereas actually, and that's what gives this raw red energy, rather than the true frequency, which was the healing aquamarine rays that are coming out of the, of the card. Um, and so... What you really need to do is apply immediately an emotional soothing balm. And that's what you're struggling to do. For you, truth is absolute. There's no meandering around with the truth. It's clear. Truth is never clear. Truth is fluid. Everything is fluid. Nothing is true forever. It's only true in the moment that you think it is, and then it warps. It naturally has interference. So, by applying a zenness of emotions, you get a transformation within your DNA. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I often talk about how aces and the suits uh, 
Wands are fire. They're what begins everything. This is the very first card, the divine spark, the beginning of thought, the first thought. And this card is so full of thoughts, so full of passions, that it can rise up and it can deliver so many ideas. But those ideas are worth nothing without emotional attachment. And that's why cups are the second suit in the tarot. And you've got the beginning of sparks, the completion of emotions. You've got all of that language within you, but something distorts you from having the bravery to speak your truth. You fear people being upset by you. Do you know what? Some people need to be upset and actually slowly you might lose people because of it because they're not grown up enough yet themselves already to find their journey and to, and to find that emotion within them. They've got distorted emotions. But do you know in the end you will find only those that match your frequency. I want to just say that for some reason the, the sun is becoming brighter and brighter across the beach here. The tide is receding and the sand today is glowing right now with this wonderful fire mustardy yellow which it doesn't usually do. It's a much darker colour. So there's something about you illuminating a new frequency of light by combining your emotions. So, you know, you say something that upsets somebody, then stop and deliver the emotional understanding to them of what it means. You know, you didn't mean to hurt them, you meant to help them. And if they can't see that, then they're actually not somebody you need to be around with. Where's this taking you? Well, it's interesting, this card is union or ring. And in the card, I have, sort of arguments with people because they people said there's two magpies but there aren't two magpies there's one it's a mirror it's time to see a new reflection of yourself an emotional reflection of yourself that's outside of the home outside of this place of safety that you go to and leave your peacock out the front with a thousand eyes watching seeing through everything and making its noise and get outside pick up the treasure which is your emotions and take it with you stop leaving your emotions hidden inside now i understand you're an empath it's very difficult to go out and not connect to the emotions of people but the difference is go outside sense the emotions of people but don't own them. What you don't do is, is you, you don't create the correct barrier. You're powerful enough to put all the pieces in order. I went to a small place, I walked the other day. It's lovely here, the energy is beautiful. And as I walked, I met a really lovely woman um, and she was the only person I saw until I got down into the little tiny lighthouse village. And then there, everybody was furious, angry, annoyed, bitter, resentful. That was the frequency I could feel. In this beautiful place, they weren't resentful of me. They weren't resentful of the place. They were resentful of their moment in the now that involves them all wandering around, feeling that they mustn't talk to each other, that they're isolated, that they're cut off and they're masked. So I read the frequency properly. I didn't want to stay in their energy particularly, but it didn't get into my body. And that's what you don't do. You, you, at the moment, you're just allowing floods of energy of everybody onto you and it's not allowing you to witness the truth. Connect with your emotions empathically to separate you from them. And you've, you're being given the world, the universe, so you've got the very first card in the deck. You've got the very final card of the Major Arcana. This is karmic completion. This is the color of healing. This is your journey forwards, 21. It's coming next year. There's an image underneath that I'm seeing of kind of, it's not quite Crystal Palace that was built, but it's like you are in a garden in the cosmos with stars all around you and there's it's all the stars are in a framework of fencing all around you and you're now 
pulling down from the cosmic eye, from the galactic centre of the universe, because this is a big eye, this card as well, but you're pulling down the energy of love, healing love. And it's pouring from the mouths of the creatures on the outside of the card. You're finally speaking your emotional truth that you see. And that's the oldest frequency within you. Witnessing emotional truths. Witnessing the clarity in things. And then allowing it to flow. So, they're the readings. I really enjoyed those. Thank you very much for letting me in. It took me two days to find those energies, um, but we got there in the end. So anyway, have a lovely day, wassail, and I'll see you very soon because we've got the moon, we've got the Galdeas to do, and also we need to talk about Mars being retrograde. Anyway, hmm, wassail.